I am Phoebe Swill. My show is called the Phoebe Swill Platform. Platform. And on my show, we discuss everything human interest issues, ranging from entertainment, politics, sports, you name it, that can get you excited and entertained. We discuss it all on the Phoebe Swill Platform. It's another edition of the Phoebe Swill platform. I am Phoebe Swill. In today's program, you know about the end child marriage campaign already that has been going on, so I'm guessing it's no news to you. Well, I think my part today was discussing child marriage in Syria, what are some of the contributing factors, and um, how we can move past that. So, to discuss that on my platform today, I have a representative from PLAN, Dr. Kadiatu. Um, Bachelor Tilo, and she's the gender advisor and plan. And I have Anna Gisgillen, she's the network coordinator for SWWN. And ladies, thank you for coming. Thank you. Now let's get the conversation going. Um, the, the rate of child marriage in the world is alarming. The last statistic I came across, it was um, one out of every four girls is a victim of child marriage. And it is estimated that in 2050, if much is not being done to address the problem, we should expect about 310 million girls to be victims of child marriage. That, of course, is a global statistic. But um, let me come over to you, um, Kadiatu. What would you say are some of the contributing factors to, um, to child marriage? Just before you answer that, for those of you who do not know, Child marriage is um, the marriage of an under 18 year old child. Whether it's a boy or a girl, as long as that kid is not yet 18 years old, then it's child marriage. Well, in Africa, particularly in Sierra Leone, that happens mostly for girls. It's, it's very difficult for you to come across a kiss of a boy below the age of 18 who was sent off to marry. Usually it happens with girls, so we're focusing on child marriage, particularly so for girls. Kariyat, what would you say are the contributing factors to child marriage? Thank you, Fabian, for the question that you've asked. Um, recently, we did the girls' summit, so I'm going to answer through the eyes of the girls, and not by own eyes, and not by the literature, but what the girls portray are the contributing factors to um, child marriage. And <coughs> excuse me, one of it is poverty was um, portrayed as a contributing factor. There are several factors, actually. We also have the norms and traditions, because there is a belief, according to them, that you know, if a girl is mature and you stay in your parents' house, especially in terms of like uh, the religious aspect, for Islam, they will say, you know, you need to send that girl to, to, to get married. So that's another thing. And um, I would say again, additional is fair, from the, the part of the parents um, for their girls not to be pregnant. So it, it's, it, it's a two-way thing. For girls not to get pregnant, parents will send their children to, to get married because they want to, to like, keep their pride. They want to ensure that you know, um, the children do not become a disgrace to them. And the children are also used as a means of resources in what they portray in their, in their, in their role plays, in their conversations, in their blogs that they wrote, and several other things. So these were the things that actually came out. So I am telling you from what they said, and not the literature that we already know, but all of what they actually said in Kabbalah for the Northern Region Summit, for instance, actually aligns with what the literature have been saying. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's several factors that contribute to China. Hannah, is there anything Kadiatu has said that uh, is there anything you want to add to what you guys have said? For me, the issue of poverty should not be the reason why parents should give their girls to early marriage. Because as if we talk about poverty, all of us are poor. But the issue of crime is not there. And parents want to use this um, young kids as part of their, their livelihood, which is totally unacceptable. And it is not fear on the part of the, the guys, especially the guys, because you will never have that the parents have sent a boy for a marriage. Only the, 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 the female. So these are things we need to, because of tradition, belief, and practice, I think we need to stop some of this bad way of tradition, accepting the bad way of tradition into the modern day's life. And if you look at the, the, the next aspect, the issue of marriage, 
according to the, 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 the law, the age of marriage, if you look at it in the, in, in the, in the traditional way, is not even um, as, uh, 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 specified, but according to our constitution, it should be 18 years and above. But when you look at the traditional issue, they, are, they, they have no age of consent. As long as that you, your breasts have been, uh, has come out, then automatically you have to go to your, your husband's house, which is totally unacceptable in the, in the, in the part of the gaps. Again, let us look at the global issues. When we look at the, the global issue, the, 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 the issue of religion, if we take the look at um, the bishop uh, uh, um, diocese across Africa, there is an age for it, um, which is um, 21 years. If you go according to, I think it's the global issue or what, it should be 16 years. So it is totally but ancient um, ancient it, religious one from the Christian aspect says girl a girl should be fourteen and a boy sixteen years. But for me, when you look at it, it's run too out to become a, a human right violation. That is one a human rights abuse. For me, I usually call it it's a, a human degrading treatment. People do, do not want to accept it, but let us face reality about it. Who can we send a 14 year old child to a man of a 55 years or a 35 year old man? What do you expect? The only thing you expect from that is death. Or at the end of the day, the head in the fusil and apartment. So for me, for me, I'm looking at it in a different perception that it is a human right violation and also in human degrading treatment, especially for our guys. Um, let me come back to you, um, uh, Kadiatu. During the, the launch, the conference that we have had at Sarah and an important point was raised and it was done by a member of the plan. Now, um, the lady was saying that we have two contributing laws, the child right and the child to charge the 18 and above, the consent of parents of 18 and above, then the um, customer remarriage and the first law, which tells you that 16 years old with the consent of parents can marry. With your, your study so far, what are the things that have been revealed? In consistency in the age of consent, that's one. Uh, not just for the Child Rights Act and the registration of the Customer Marriage and the Act, but we have the Civil Marriage Act, and also we have the Christian Marriage Act, and then we have the uh, Mamadi Marriage Act. When we look at all of these laws, according to the studies, it shows that you know one is saying 18, civil marriage is saying 21 years. Um, when it comes to CIA, it's saying 18 years, that's the age of consent. And when it comes to the Mamadan, it didn't say anything, it is just silent. So that's one of the findings that actually came out. And secondly, in terms of the, the human rights issue itself, being judged to, when the consultants look at the um, Child Rights Act, in terms of um, the, the penalties given there for, for people who violate the rights of girls who are below the age of 18, it's, it's all this minimum, it's nothing. So as a result, you couldn't see that. And we also have to support the Central Office Act to say, for the girls under the age of 18 years, if anybody has sex with them, and so many other things, it becomes an issue of sexual penetration. And these are things that are not being implemented. But these are things that need to be harmonized in order for us to first of all look at what is the age of consent, because that was very true in the report that those issues came out. And the other factor that came out is that the majority of the um, traditional leaders are saying, or community people are saying, well, when other girls get pregnant, they just send them off to, to get married. And so, as a result, you have several of these type of marriages happening in the community. And also, the issue of compromise, when a sexual assault case has happened, and one of the easier way of solving this issue, according to the report, is by um, sending that out to marriage. So, it's like, you know, violating that girl's rights, you know, in terms of sending
said he didn't know how to offer to her. And I said, what's up with this? What do you mean? I said, listen, this is your sexual answer. So, this is where, like, you know, the um, factors of the issues that came out of the report that needs to be addressed. Also, in terms of looking at, you know, um, data collection in terms of marriages, you know, for now, you do not have that certificate as an issue. And then you say somebody is, how do you tell that somebody is about the age of 18? And then somebody that people come out and they lie. So, so these are these are all challenges that are the law, you know, the laws need to fix. So, child marriage, you know, for us to be able to address child marriage, you have components of several things that need to be fixed in order for us to have you know rights in certain. So, these were like the issues that came out of the report. That was um, done by, that was supported by Plan International Freedom of Information Affairs. There are several research reasons to to try and manage poverty and legal centralization of this. But do you see um, ignorance, lack of knowledge, being a key factor of this? I am not as certain of the law because all of our parents are aware. The thing that they want to protect is their name. That you cannot put this waste to your family. That is all. They, they want to protect their home. And because so they want to protect so their home, some people do think that um, education is not meant for girl child, it's only for men. Well, that is ignorance, to be honest. But if we continue doing community education to raise awareness on early marriage, and gender-based violence across the country every day, not on a one-off incident, not because something happened today, we talk about it today and we forget about it. It should be a continuous process. A continuous process will change the mindset, especially of a, a, a majority of our own traditional leaders, the archaic method of um, delivering to people in different communities. They, they, are, they, are, they must change. Because I'm looking at it, if we continue, we, let us not depend on governments, to be honest, because they cannot do everything for us. Here is the law, like what Kadi was saying. And since um, um, the, the Constitutional Review now, and now I think they are preparing to present their white papers, I think it should have been our first place as women to bring the issue of the, the, the age consent of marriage and also the age consent of a girl child because it is and why we are part of the civil society because the tradition and the the, the CRs and the, the, the child rights act they have two different laws until we we find a better way to 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 um, and to allow people to understand that these two laws have become, I would say, the conflict of interest because um, um, the law, when the law was passed in parliament, the Child Rights Act, we did not popularize it as, as, as citizens, as women institution to the, for, for the girls themselves to understand. This kind is for all children, including boys, but we think that it is very, very important for the girl child because we fail to do our homework. This is what we are getting out of what we feel to. But notwithstanding, we continue to do it in our society, in our community, in our surrounding. Even we continue to, to allow um, our senior um, um, clergy men and women, our senior imams in different boxes to give out during their kutuba, to give out during their sermon, to explain to people because if, we, because if the church fail, to run the state, the state will run the church. This is the way I'm looking at it. Because when you see small, small girls have been become pregnant, despite some of them is not from their peers, is big men who are bigger than them doing these things to them. But because of um, 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 the issue of people pledge poverty, 
to this for me, I would say it's not a And the main victims of this are the girls themselves. Now, um, let me stay with me here. Let's go quickly to a quick word. Um, during the, the national launch of the program, of course, there the first lady said, poverty is not an excuse for child marriage. But there are also other younger girls there who had poems to share, and some of them who had statements to make. Let's hear what they had to say, because, yeah, they are the main victims when it comes to child marriage. So did you have a choice? Did you get to choose what your future would look like? Did you get to choose your opportunities? Did you get to decide what course you wanted to study? Did you get to decide who you want to marry? Do you have that choice? But some of our girls don't. See, at an early age, they get told who they should marry. And so, they don't get to live their dreams. Why? Because a child is forced into child marriage, which could lead into teenage pregnancy. Did you have a choice? And if you had a choice, don't you think that they deserve to choose too? Let's end child marriage together.
Me na Zainab Sisi. I be get better and born again. We are the gospel. We are the sixteen years. I remember waiting for what happened to me. Like now, if I was the one, born again. Again, imagine if I would get the right information, advice, and support. I love for them, born to kill me at this school. Those were voices of some of the girls, what they had to say about um, child marriage. And child marriage, of course, is to a large extent linked with teenage pregnancy. Because once these girls are alive, then of course you should expect them to become mothers. Now, some of these children, Kabiatu, are not just, um, they were not just sent off to marry. Some of them are victims of sexual offenses that their cases are still their cases are still pending. No conclusive justice has been rendered to them. And some of the parents just say, okay, let's settle out of court and agree and accept the proposal of the, the, the perpetrator who comes in to to marry to marry the girl. Have you been following some of those cases? Um, in terms of following up with um, the cases, um we, we have our social workers who do monitor and send um, reports to like the child protection, the child protection advisor in um, Atlanta International. So um, in terms of the status of these cases, they are being followed up and reports are being made. And these reports are formulated in terms of policies in terms of our engagement with stakeholders um, as to what needs to be done in terms of a structural change we really want to see. So that's one thing that we have been doing, but you have to keep in mind that child marriage is, is um, so it, it isn't something that is new, but it's something that has now been taken on by um, like the international communities like the African um, Union, um, and also, as a result, organizations are now working, you know, as seriously. It was done, but like under sexual exploitation and abuse, not specifically as child marriage, looking at it, so looking at it on its own, but a combination of several other issues that we were looking at. But now, Plan International is focusing on addressing issues such as child marriage, and it's very key in terms of what um, Plan International intends to do. And um, one of the things is to look at the law, the legislation of customary marriage and divorce act, which states that a girl under the age of 18, regardless of the age, can be married, which means if that girl is 16 years, 14 years, 13, 12 can be married. And you know, when you have a national law that states that has such provisions, it is just giving room to 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 the the populace to do as they will in terms of sending orders. So in terms of monitoring, we're going to put off, you know, in terms of our systems, our structures, we are doing new proposals in terms of ensuring that these girls are being supported. And Plan International has what it calls its beer, because I am a girl campaign. And that campaign is focused on And how has that campaign been helping young girls, those who are victims? It has been helping them in terms of getting them involved. In terms of ensuring that their issues are being, you know, are being said, you know, are being heard in, 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 in kind of um, the public sphere. So, and also in terms of engaging stakeholders. So, part of the BEA campaign is to ensure that policies and legislative frameworks are being reviewed. Now, these laws, especially the Child Rights Act and the customary marriage and the also contradicts themselves. And if if a perpetrator of sexual offence, or let's say someone sends a child to marry up before 18, you have a good lawyer, you can have that in court. And the chances for you to get away with it are there because there is one which tells you that uh, you can marry at 16 with consent of your parents. And that in itself is a very big challenge in prosecuting 
the issues of child marriage that are being reported. Yeah, Phil and I agree with you absolutely. They're not just that it starts even from the family support community itself, where these cases are being reported. First of all, let's look at it. Child marriage is being looked at as something that is traditional. It's acceptable and it's, it's a normal way of life. That's how people out there look at it. And even for some people who are a part of the justice system, you know, you look, why am I wasting my time actually, you know, in terms of investigating such cases? So, you know, um, in terms of even people coming with a complaint, if you look at the family support unit statistics, you will see that there are just minimal cases being reported for child marriage. Because as you heard the girl from the launch, who are the perpetrators of the parents? Because they sit and then, you know, they, they arrange these marriages. And you have the demands, the traditional leaders. You have circumstances where parents, girls are being given off because their parents owe somebody else and they have debt. And in turn, in order for them to pay off this debt, what they do is to, to give off these girls. So they are being taken as a way of having some resources. And when parents want, cannot fend for themselves, they rely on these girls and they send them off. In Kabbalah, for instance, we have a girl who is now 17 years old, she was given when she was 13 years. We have two of them, they are case studies. And these girls, since they were young, and when they are denied, when they deny to go to these marriages, what do, they, what do the parents do? They are abandoned. You are no more a child of our own, you are disowned. They are molested. You know, they are beaten. These are real stories. They are not just stories, in fact. These are real happenings. These are things that are happening to girls. So at times when you are in free time, you think, oh, I think this is the kind of myth, it doesn't happen. But when you actually go to the provinces and you see that these things happen. So and when these things are reported to the family support, you say, for instance, the parents will come and say, she's not 18 years as we were saying, she's not below 18, she's above 18 years. Where would you take that case? Let alone for it to go to the court. Since my time of working, I have never heard of a case being sent to the court and being prosecuted that is a child marriage case. I have never heard of it. I stand to be corrected. I so it's a huge problem. When I come to you, what do you think we're getting right and what do you think we're getting wrong that is leading up to the amount of um, child marriage cases we're having in the country? What are we getting wrong that we should get right? Um, actually, the laws are there. The enforcement and implementation of those laws are not working. That is what. And the community, we in the community, are not playing a role as a community people. We are not doing what we're supposed to do as leaders in our communities, as women in our communities. So all these things are wrong. And what we want to get right now is this. The issue of human rights, of our kids, that is the most powerful. I will say this in our vernacular language. Majority of the girls now they right, but they feel their responsibility. And what we lack again as spirits, we lack to them their, their obligations. We don't even tell them what to do their obligations are. And the other thing again, we look at the, the, the right of a child. The child look at herself that everything for me should be in a platter. No. We need to encourage our girls. But the issue of the way we bring up our girls is different. The former days and now are quite different. During our own days, Elder will let you in the streets, you will do something wrong, they will beat you up, nothing will come out of it. But today, you dear big son and child, at the end of the day, you find yourself in police. So these are the things that got to work into our society. And so, the perpetrators... All these are playing a role in child marriage. All of these things are playing a role. And then the other things, again, that is playing a really vital role in child marriage. It's the issue of when the woman becomes pregnant and then you will see this old age man. Oh, if it is a boy, he's my friend. I'm giving you this. If it is a girl, she's my wife. 
I think we need to support some of these academics. And it's still occurring in our different communities and society. And we don't do anything about it. Here I am saying I oppose traditional ways our parliament chiefs, our sexual chiefs, our traditional leaders. They do not get them. Even the child marriage, you will hardly see it in a Christian uh, and surrounding. I'm telling you. You will never see a pastor to wed a two small guy or a small child to so a huge man. But you will see it in communities. But you will see it, especially in our Muslim city. To be honest, and say, do you know the age? Then you will have the imam or the allergy or the sheikh. So to say that is married. That is the yes, at the launch, at the launch, the representative from the Islam perspective said, the requirement of the marriage should be between a man and a woman, not a boy and a girl. So it may be that all the people just interpret these messages, like I thought we were saying that when it comes to Christianity, one will tell you that uh, um, the girl should be um, 14 and the boy should be 16. Now we've been reversed to 21 years at all. I think it depends on the individual. You know, many a time people try to um, call messages to their convenience when they want to do certain things, yeah? They try to understand it their own way. Sometimes not that they don't know the right things, but just for them to have their own way out, their escape route. So they try to call things their own way to suit their convenience. But when it comes to our villages also, there are times when some of our um, chiefs and our uh, local chiefs compute. And some of the rich ones among them in the community, because I learned that um, for certain societies like for uh, female, female society, in some of our 20 sons so we are entitled to be a wife. I, I learned that I think it's not everywhere, but in some parts, when it's sons so you are entitled to be a wife. Now, I can get to the economy international in the monitoring you do, the information you get, how do you use it to help these girls so it is? Uh, the economy international is a development organization. It's a national conference organization that has its primary focus on issues. And um, for some years, we've been, we've been working on female gender and mutilation, like a child marriage as well, like a kid morally. We don't have to go back to the for female gender and mutilation. And, and whenever we have to go to this fight, it's all the rules and us. And of course, an organization could not operate without, without a reform in And it's the forms are proposed and writing and the forms that we have. And like I earlier said to you, we also look at in terms of how we engage you know, um, the, the political leaders and how do we have an advocacy. Um, as I started saying, the media is an advocacy initiative. And I'm glad to go into it. So I how do you assess um, the government's commitment in ending child marriage? Um, to, to be very honest, in terms of writing, in terms of what they've been saying, they've been very committed. If we, we just need those words to be translated into actions. That's what, what is needed. Because, you know, um, the president is committed and, you know, um, the ministers are committed. You will meet parliament chiefs and will tell you, we are very much committed to ending child marriage. However, you know, plan have been supporting like this with um, the, the, the review plan and other organizations such as UNICEF, you have UNDP, UNFP and other organizations supporting the implementation of the legislation of customary like, review and its implementation. Um, it just needs to kick off from the Ministry of Social Welfare, Gender and Children's Affairs and we need to work with them so that they, 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 we continue this work. So in terms of you know words, commitments, in terms of words we have it, what we need is the action. And you know, I must say, I must confess that because to some say that more yeah, the to, implementation of it will be enforcement. To some extent, you know, um, when you compare us Syrians to other countries, you say kudos, we've done some some good work in terms of having some very good laws. Um, especially like when you have sexual offenses that feel very strong. And even the legislation of customary marriage, it can be adapted, it is, it is contextual. However, you know, when you look at the rights of the girls that were released, 
So we need to fix that and ensure that these laws are being popularized. And you were asking in terms of ignorance also for, for the population. It's not so much of the ignorance as to what the value is for boys as girls. They will tell you, you know, since you and I know that when the boy is born and you say, what did you give back to? Say, I give back to a boy, it's happiness. And when you give back to a girl, well, tell her thank you. That's the word that we will just say. And also, um, what, what, how do we see? We grow up to see who girls are. We grow up to see who boys are and what their values are. And in terms of that, that is what will inform the choices. So you will say, yes, they are ignorant because they do not know the value that girls will also give to the family. Because they will just think, okay, the best way, let's just have the benefits now. Let's just have girls smile off. And that is the best way. And to be very honest with the feeling, I interviewed one of the survivors. The greatest thing that she felt that was so painful for her was the abandonment of her family. And she said, even my little boy could not talk to me anymore. Why? Because she refused to be married. Because she wants to continue her education. She figured, let me just continue. And in free time, you will see girls have access to education. In the provinces, girls are grappling in order for them to have even the access to education. The other girl had to run away from the marriage home and she, she gets a bench each time she sends to the husband to sleep with him. They need to employ some strategies. And some of these things, when you hear them, you run down tears. If we have over 40% of our population being given to marriage, what would happen to say in terms of development? That's a whole other issue. Yeah, we're coming to look at what the um, long term, well, the short term and long term effects will be on the country with um, the child marriage happening now if much is not being done to stop it. But you know, aside from the um, you know educational um, devastating impact the um, child marriage has on the country and the girls. It also has some health issues, some serious health issues. Now let's look at what happens at the Aberdeen Women's Centre in regards to fistula. Mind you, uh, Serena accounts for one of the highest rates of uh, uh, mortality in the, in the world. And you know, most of these happen from these teenage girls who are sent off to marry early teenage pregnancy and all that. They struggle to bear children on their own. Some of them have to go through Caesar. Others will try to deliver on their own. They end up with cases like fistula. It's only a handful of them who actually go through labor and come out successfully without any surgery or complication. Let's look at the Aberdeen Women's Center and see some of the devastating impacts of um, child marriage and teenage pregnancy. The Aberdeen Women's Centre is a centre that um, helps women and children. We have our fistula unit that treats women who already have fistula. And then in 2010 we opened a maternity unit to help prevent fistula, so provide um, good maternity care so that fistula doesn't happen in the first place. And we deliver about 100 to 120 babies a month in that unit. And then we have our children's outpatient clinic. So it's what I would say is a great holistic centre for women. And I think that's a particularly good model. Poverty is the bottom line. People just look at themselves as if I'm very poor. I don't think if I go there, I will be, they will attend to me. That is the difference between us and other hospitals. In fact, we do tell people that we are looking for less privileges, especially for the maternity areas. It is free. You can come to Aberdeen, they don't have to worry about paying transportation, you don't have to worry about paying medical treatment, you don't have to worry about being fed, all of that is there. And you are treated like a human being. It's good, it's unique, Aberdeen Women's Centre, because they are helping a lot in Sierra Leone, not even Freetown alone, the whole of Sierra Leone. Maternal health is that platform that's going to raise women up, and it's not just about health. It's about empowering them and giving, making them leaders. For Abadi women, most of them can testify as they are sitting now. Most of these centers around, they are not given this kind of care. But for Abadi women, we are doing all this for this patient. And for now, we say we are the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of the Phoebe.
previous will platform, I am previous will. Those are just some of the effects, yeah? Taking a look down Aberdeen Women's Centre. Now, let me come back to you, um, Kaliatu. What would you say are the uh, possible, you know, short term to the present day and long term effects of child marriage in Sierra Leone if much is not done to stop the amount of child marriage cases that are happening? The first thing I will go to is to drop out in school. You, you will have a lot of girls dropping out because this is like the first thing that really happens to. So the girls will drop out of school. You also have, um, like I said, the health consequences. So say the few things that you've already mentioned. So I won't bother with those because those are all part of the effects of child marriage. And um, also you have high rates of prostitution. You know, a lot of like these guys, if, if parents have abandoned them and they are in the streets, who will take care of them? And like the one girl said, okay, I have to do here in order for me to be able to continue schooling. But she doesn't have that initiative and she decides to go in the street. What happens to her? And in terms of um, medium term, when you look at our labor market, you will not you will find very few people who skilled um, with skills in order for them to be able to do, to contribute to the country's economy. And overall, if we, we, we have those kind of things overall for the long term effect, then we'll just be underdeveloped. We won't get to the stage where we will be called a developed country. China is developed today because both its 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 population, be it male and female, are working and they contribute to the to the country's economy. But then how would women of this country be able to contribute to the economy? They will not be able to be part of the political kind of space. Especially they will not that we are, we are young people, gender parity. Exactly. Exactly. They will not be able to look because when somebody is educated then you will be able to look at your surrounding and be able to analyze and then come up with concrete actions. But then you will just have a population that will just go with any crowd that will not be able to like analyze situations. So I think those are the effects that we would have if child marriage is not tackled. Okay, let me go to you, Anna. Um, what would you say are the you know, possible solutions to the problem of child marriage in any child marriage in Sierra Leone? I think we need to continue with our community awareness raising. We need the, the, we are the father of the nation, who is the champion for women in Africa, who is our, our president. For me, I don't want, not only the, the, we want to see the law, the enforcement of the law. And in this community, for me, we want to see our stakeholders there give rights to commitments. That for me, if I see any child marriage, I have my responsibility as a, as a stakeholder or as a parent chief or as a parent to report each and every parent that want to conduct a child marriage. Let us continue our awareness in our community. Let us tell these guys that they must be guys and not mothers. Let us encourage them for them to pay their attention in their book and leave the peer pleasure group that they belong. If for those in free time, let them leave their WhatsApp issues. Let them focus on their education. For those in the provinces, let us encourage them. Because for them, they have a long way to go to school, a long way. So we pass about three or four villages, four or five miles to go to school. Let us encourage them. Let us, let us, let's parents for community leaders help others. I think the issue of helping kids in our community to be a better citizen, than to be our tormentors. Let us, let them be a mentor to us and not let you torment them to become a, 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 a become parents or to allow them to be They are not in the age of I think the issue of awareness and the law enforcement agents for the issue want to see FSU in different uh, uh, districts or in different areas must be effective. The gender social workers must be committed to their work. The issue of commitment is the most paramount because 
If we don't have people who are committed to these things, then we will still continue to have child marriage and teenage pregnancy across the world. It is both like two of the same, it's just the same point, one or the other, and the child is the same thing. So teenage pregnancy goes with child marriage. Yes, it's a very so platform. I have all the ladies here as people, and uh, let's get to hear from them what their comments and uh, questions will be. My name is Ma Asita Jara, and I am also talking on the Ali Maria. Ali marriage is becoming very rampant in our community at a time when our government and other international organizations are doing a, a payroll setback on early marriage. Giving you a reflection on how it started, a payroll of the pre-demise, we figure that the whole preamble is attributed to poverty. Why, if you may ask? Because of the word itself, poverty. Early marriages come with a new set of responsibilities for which we are not ready emotionally or physically. It is really painful when you see a young girl getting an education built up with a dream and at the same and at the end that same dream is being shattered. It is so sad that girls are removed from portraying their education all in the name of being subdued to men who are old enough to be their father. In replica of my statement, within a given time, you will see a man with enough cows and money asking for the same girl with a dream had in marriage. Assuming it was you, how do you think it will reflect? Thank you. My name is Nasrat Bombalai Tue. I have a point. I'm like everyone. I'm a young girl with my teenage. Poverty strikes, strikes me, but never distracts me. I believe in the change given to all. I work out daily to make a living. Though I'm poor, though I'm not rich yet, but someday to come, my name will be in the book of history among great women that I stand to achieve. Thank you. My name is Asia Tosila. I'm here to discuss an early marriage. Early marriage has a lot of negative implications on girls and the society as a whole. It affects the majority of girls, especially those from very poor economic situations. Yeah. Early marriage devastates the lives of girls, their families, and their communities leading to poverty. Girls drop out of school, thus depriving them of education and meaningful work. They suffer health risks. The suffer health with this contributes to high rate of maternal and child mortality as well as sexual transmitted diseases. They are also more likely to be victims of sexual abuse, violence and, so and social isolation. I believe that if these girls who have been forced into early marriages have been given the opportunity to be educated will be better people in the society and will make meaningful contributions to the country. Okay, my name is Fibian Kamala. Well, I want to talk about early marriage. I would like to say early marriage is not so positive for personal and community development. Although many believe that this is just a problem for them, in reality, it is a problem for us all. Specifically, whether a girl or a woman, we all live in the same world, and that world needs all the brain power, creativity, and productivity it can get. Girls suffer violently from both emotional, physical, and verbal abuse. Investing in girls in achieving their dreams will enable young girls to grow up as an active citizen in their societies. The inability to receive equal education has been devastating to these young girls. My name is Janet Kamakuma. I stand to say no because I believe giving a child quality education in life is the greatest gift of all, which is that you have wanted to aim. 
while trying to give her hand in marriage, remember, girls should be girls and not mothers. Thank you. My name is Juliana Bangura. No matter the circumstances, if you have the determination to learn, you will learn. Thank you. Hi there, I am Phoebe Swill. I am Phoebe Swill. My show is called The Phoebe Swill Platform. Platform. And on my show, we discuss everything. Human interest issues ranging from entertainment, politics, sports, you name it. That can get you excited and entertained. We discuss it all on The Phoebe Swill Platform.